main thing I'm doing is just keeping time. Uh, the first question each of the debaters will have to answer is, what is the best way to preach? In other words, how can you best win people over to your side? Each debater will offer their opening argument in five minutes, and they'll cross-examine each other for two more five-minute sections after that. During the debate, if you have any questions you'd like to ask the debaters, just write it down on a sheet of paper. We'll take them up during a debate, up during a short break, and the debaters will uh, answer as many as they can. Thanks. Well, I'm glad to be here, and uh, I guess the first topic we're discussing is presentation. And I would say that, you know, my first goal is not to win people over to my side. That's ultimately a goal of mine, but it's not my first goal. Jesus did not win most people over to his side. I, my first goal is to present the truth and to be biblical. And lots of times you won't win people over doing that. Uh, but preaching publicly, you know, preaching is not handing out tracts. It's not feeding the poor. It's not witnessing one-on-one. -on -one, it's not inviting people to church. All that's biblical and I'm not against it, but it's not preaching. Preaching is always an outdoor public proclamation of truth. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 27, What I tell you in darkness, speak ye in light, what you hear in the ear, preach upon the housetops. Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you know, a lot of people think that, well, the gospel is good news. And if you're a condemned sinner that realizes you deserve hell, then it is good news. But lots of times what the Bible calls the gospel would not necessarily be considered good news to most of the world is living in rebellion against God. Revelation 14, 6 and 7 says the everlasting gospel and then it says, fear God give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment is come. According to the Bible, that's the everlasting gospel. Mark chapter 1 verse 1 through 4 says the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God as it is written in the prophets behold I send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before thee the voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Then it says in verse 4, John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Point I'm trying to make in that passage, Mark 1.1, 1, 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it starts out with John the Baptist preaching the message of repentance. The gospel starts out with repentance. Preaching is an outdoor public proclamation of truth done in a high-handed, heavy-handed, officious, meddlesome manner, offering one services with an I asked for, wanted, or appreciated. Now there's something about going out and meeting the sinner on his common ground in the public forum and confronting him with the truth about God and his condition before God. Most of the people we're reaching would never voluntarily read a tract or attend a church service. Titus 1.3 says that God has in due times manifested or revealed his word through preaching. 1 Corinthians 1.21 said it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yes, Paul said preaching is going to look foolish to the world, but it's God's method for saving sinners. What are we supposed to be preaching? Luke chapter 24, verse 47, Jesus told us. And lots of times we preach everything but this. And this is not the only thing we're supposed to preach, but it's something that America desperately needs and something that's often neglected. Jesus told his disciples... Uh, that Luke 24, 47, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. In America, most people do not preach repentance. They preach remission of sins without preaching repentance. But without repentance, there is no remission of sins. Uh, over and over, everybody in the Bible preached repentance. M Matthew chapter 3, verse 1, uh, verse uh, 3, uh, Matthew chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 said, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse 17, Jesus said, uh, the time is, uh, Jesus said, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Luke 13, 3 and 5, Jesus said, Except you repent, you will all likewise perish. Mark 1, 15, Jesus said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. 
We got John the Baptist. We got Jesus. Peter said, Mark, uh, Acts 2.38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Paul preached repentance, Acts 17.30. God now commands all men everywhere to repent, because He's appointed a day in which He'll judge the world in righteousness. Uh, the disciples preached that men ought to repent. Acts Mark, Mark, Mark 6.12. So they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed all many that were sick, and they healed them. Uh, now, we're, preaching means lifting up your voice. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 14 says, On the day of Pentecost, Peter lifted up his voice. Isaiah 58, 1 said, Cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Uh, number two, we're supposed to preach the word. Not only the gospel. There's a lot of things in the Word of God that are not the gospel only. Uh, 2 Timothy 4 2 says, Preach the Word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Uh, we're supposed to preach the law. 1 Timothy, you know, we live in a society where we think that a sin the Bible calls, that's it? Okay. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank you, Micah, for coming out. Thank you, Alex, for doing this. And thank all of y'all for coming. I uh, am not much. going to be like Micah. You're going to see that from the very beginning. You know, we've all been, most of you in this room, have been exposed to Micah's preaching and uh, his method for preaching, correct? And you, some of you probably haven't even heard, most of you haven't even heard me preach, so you're not going to hear me doing all that. And many of you have been exposed to your own pastors. But you know, what I want to know, and what I thought about all week long as I was preparing for this, is what does God say about preaching? What's the method that God wants us to preach? That's important. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in my little section here, look at what the Bible says about preaching. How do we know if His way or my way is right? or whether there's another way altogether. Acts 17.11 talks about a group from Berea. It's, these people were special because they studied the Bible to find out what Paul had said was so. That would be my challenge to you. Study the Bible to find out if what he's doing is right or what I'm doing is right. That would be my biggest challenge for you. They studied with great eagerness, examining the Scriptures daily to see whether these things were true. If Micah, if nothing else, Micah's method has provoked me to study the Word of God more, to find out what is the right way to do this. So he mentioned 2 Timothy 4. He said, it says, the Bible, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the dead, and by His appearing and His kingdom, preach the Word. Be ready in season and out of season, Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. This gives us a good outline. The Bible itself tells us how we're supposed to preach. That passage itself tells us how we're supposed to preach. It says, preach the Word. Like he said, the object is what? The Word, the Bible. Not our opinion, the Bible. And it's not the Bible with my take on it. It doesn't matter what I think what the Word says. I had some great conversations with y'all, and y'all brought up some of the things that he was saying, and you've come, you might have even gone to me and said, hey, do you think that he's right with this? Is it right? Is it fair? Well, sometimes in my mind, it doesn't always seem fair. But it really doesn't matter what I think or what he thinks. It's what the Word says. If the Bible says this, we have to stand with it. And that's very important. 